Okay, step one, you're going to pick a large relief stamp. I used Large Blossom from Hero Arts, and you're just going to ink it up well with Versamark. This stamp actually um, clings very well to the block. For whatever reason, it didn't stick here. You can see it fell right off, so I just applied even pressure and kept moving on. The next step that we're going to do is to just coat this in white embossing powder and just dash off the excess and melt it quickly with a heat gun. To get this video to under 10 minutes for YouTube, I had to speed it up. The next thing we're going to do is um, take some Distress Ink. This particular one is Wild Honey by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to smush it off in a pile on my craft mat. And I'm going to use a water brush. I'm going to touch it into the ink and then put it directly onto my paper. Now I'll tell you, I got this technique from a class I took at Archivers, and they used regular cardstock for this technique. Um, it pills a lot when you use regular cardstock. So I went ahead and used watercolor paper. It still embosses beautifully, but it holds the color better, and I really think the end result is more beautiful. So I'm just doing all the colors in Wild Honey, pulling the colors darkest in the center and then pulling them out to the ends of the leaves. And I'll do all of one color and then I'll go back and add a second color. Because it's hard to see, especially on the video, where the edges of your imprint are, I think it's beneficial to keep the stamp out where you can see the finished image in front of you and you'll know what lines represent what flowers. The next color I'm using is called Rusty Hinge. Um, this color combination is something I never would have come up with on my own. I think it's stunning. This would be gorgeous brayered on a card. Um, I'm just touching this to the center of the flower and then I'll blend the edges back outwards. The nice thing about this paper, and especially the watercolor, is even after the ink dries, you can go in with your water brush and move that color around. It's very blendable, and you get a different result every single time you do it. No two cards will look the same. So I'm going to clean off my craft mat, and now I'm going to go back with a color called Fire Brick. I'm going to touch this to the areas again right in the center a little bit less than before and the undersides of the leaves and then I'll just blend it around. If I feel like my brush is too wet I'll dab it off on a um, paper towel right next to me. Um, you can also use just a wet water brush to again blend the colors out. Now I'm going to go do the blue. I'm going to take the blue which is um, called Broken China. It's an amazingly gorgeous, rich, rich, rich color. And I'm just going to tap that on the rest of the flowers. I am using a lot of water here um, because I want this to have a little bit longer drying time as I'm going to come back with peeled paint and add a little bit of green and blend this directly on the paper. Again, I sped this video up so it would fit into YouTube, but it's almost this fast to do this technique. It's very fun. It's incredibly hard to mess up. If you make a mistake, while it's still wet, just take your paper towel and touch it right over the top. You don't have to wait for it to dry between colors. And the ink on your craft mat, you can just wipe that off with paper towel. I'm going to go back with peeled paint, which is an um, olive green color. I'm going to do all the stems, and then I'm going to take a little bit of that peeled paint color and I'm going to mix it directly onto the flowers to give them um, a kind of muted blue-green shade. Um, as I said before, this is incredibly forgiving. The colors blend very well. If you believe that your flower is a little too green, just add some more blue and you can just mix them around just like that. It's um, again very forgiving. If you don't have a craft mat, you can take these inks and put them on an acrylic block. You can smush them onto a regular dish. And because these are um, water-based paints, it's um, very easy to clean them up with a paper towel and they'll just clean up like a breeze. Now I'm going back here with a plain water brush and I'm just smoothing the colors out. 
I'm going to give this a moment or two to dry. Um, when you can see that it's completely dry and not pooled, I'm going to take a little bit of glossy accents and I'm going to take my finger and just smear it over the top of each flower. And this is a technique I did learn at this class. I'd never seen this before. Um, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. This gives your flowers the same level of shine as the embossed areas and it gives it a consistently shine look. And then you can just take a paper towel, wipe off the excess. You can wipe off any of the watercolor that got onto the embossing powder. Um, it's virtually impossible to make a mistake. I'm going to trim this down and I'm going to get ready to mount this into a card. And that's the entire painted petals technique. My husband thinks it looks like wallpaper. I'm telling you, I would cover our sofa in this. I think it's just lovely. Now, for this part, um, I separated myself from the sample at Archivers, and I went ahead and used the Beautiful Blooms uh, leaf from Paper Tray Ink and some Palette Snow White ink to ink up just regular craft cardstock. And I'm just going to tape my center image onto a piece of um, light blue cardstock. I'm so sorry, I can't remember who the manufacturer is. But that'll give it a little bit of pop and a little bit of dimension. And then all I have to do is trim it down. I've discovered that I'm a lot better adhering and then trimming um, to get an even edge than I am trying to center something on a slightly larger piece of cardstock. I'm just not that coordinated. Um, and now all I have to do is add my pop dots and my twine and center this, you know, position this directly on my card and I'm finished. That's the entire technique. I'm going to put links at the end of um, this video. You can check my blog post at cardoftheweek.com. I'll also post this as a um, video tutorial on papercraftplanet.com. And I'll have links directly to Archivers uh, for all the supplies. They, I am not an Archivers affiliate. I don't make any money on this. But since I got this technique from their store um, to order the distress inks or any of the supplies that I showed you here, um, I believe it's appropriate to link back to them and give them the business since they were kind enough to share this with me. Um, have a wonderful day.